Okay, if you'll take your scripture for today's message from Psalms 33. And while you're looking at that uh, and getting it, one thing I want to mention to you, when I was in seminary, I uh, visited a, a church. It's a real strict, I guess you call it old-fashioned Presbyterian church. And uh, they didn't have songbooks. They sang their hymns out of psalms like this in King James English. It was very interesting to attend the service and they knew the melody, there was a different melody for every psalm. And of course our word song comes from the word psalm. And uh, uh, just amazing to me that in, the, it was then the 20th century. In the 20th century there were people singing without any instruments right out of the Bible. and. Uh, in some ways, that's, that's really a good thing. So this is a very modern translation of, of the Bible. Uh, good people, cheer God. Right-loving people sound best when praising. Use guitars to reinforce your hallelujahs. Pray his praise on a grand piano. Compose your own new song to him. Give him a trumpet fanfare. Uh, I don't know how many of you sing, say when you, when you uh, pray to God, hallelujah. I would encourage you to start doing that. You know, hallelujah is one word that is exactly the same in every language in the world. Isn't that amazing? Every culture you're in, where there's Christian people or Jewish people, and they say hallelujah, it's exactly the same thing. And, it, of course, it's translated into their own language. I don't know how in, in Arabic or in all the Hindu languages you'd, you'd translate it, but it, it's said the same way, hallelujah. That's, this Jewish word has literally gone around the world. But it's so important to praise God, to cheer God, and good loving people are full of praise. They're full of praise for everything that's been happening in their life in a positive way. And isn't that a, a great sentence? People sound best when praising God. And you know, rather than talking about all the negative things around us, I would encourage you to, every time you talk to somebody, talk about the praiseworthy things that are going on in the world. Uh, like for example, like our children's sermon, I'm so grateful for people that take all their newspapers, magazines, I, I, we, we, the recycling glass even. Uh, we, we build up on glass things, tin. I just am so grateful to people, more and more people are recycling their things. In Germany, when we'd eat in German mess halls as US Army soldiers, there was a German outside making sure that Amerikanskis put their plastic and plastic container, their paper in the paper container, and the Germans were really in reinforcing that 20 years ago, recycling. But uh, it's so important to talk about positive things. Your whole life changes when you praise God. And when you praise God, you're gonna be in, in the habit of praising things, so you go out of your way to praise other people. And you know, God doesn't have to do anything spectacular in, in your life, just normal things. If you reframe your whole life as praising God, you're going to sound a lot better to yourself, and you're going to sound a lot better uh, to your friends and family. Now, of course, there's negative things in the world, but it's important that we try to, to reframe everything, praising God, you know, some of the best things that have ever happened to you and to me have been very negative things that force us to God, that force us to do the right thing, that force us. Uh, there's a friend of mine, uh, he, he says on a regular basis, I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic. <laughs> He's grateful that he got caught because then he got into his culture, then he got into sobriety, then he got into a faith in God. And uh, he has a real good sense of humor, and he says, I'm grateful 
that I'm a recovering alcoholic. And when I first got in the program, I called myself, because I didn't want to go to any meetings, I called myself a court-ordered alcoholic. <laughs> and I thought, isn't it wonderful a guy can have a sense of humor about the worst thing that ever happened to him in his life has turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to him in his life. Uh, the next, the, that's the first section. That, is, that section is about our actions. The second section is about God's creation. For God's word is solid to the core. Everything God makes is sound inside and out. He loves it when everything fits. When his world is in plumb line true, earth is drenched in God's affectionate satisfaction. The skies were made by God's command. He breathed the word and the stars popped out. He scooped the sea into his jug and put the ocean in his keg. You know, God's creation is so wonderful. And somebody today just thank God for the rain. Boy, we didn't get anywhere near the rain you guys got, but we're glad we got a quarter of an inch of rain. Uh, but, you know, I'm just so thankful that I live in a part of the world where even the summertime, it'll rain occasionally. Uh, especially after fighting forest fires in the Pacific Southwest and being, uh, seeing the dryness constantly for four years. You know, it's just wonderful to live in a place where there's rain. But even deserts have beauty, you know. Uh, I think one of the most beautiful deserts I've ever been in, there was saguaro cactus, great big tall cactus. They barely had enough water to live, and yet the beauty was in God's creation is everywhere. You know, dry mountains sometimes are just as beautiful as forest cover mountains. But everything fits in God's creation. Everything has God's affection, this psalm says, his affectionate satisfaction. And God is control in control of everything. Um, you know, one of the things that Kathleen and I are very grateful for and are praising God for is uh, December 24th, we were minding our own business and, our <laughs> and there's this 40 mile an hour wind from the northwest at five degrees below zero for two days and our plumbing broke upstairs. And so I ran downstairs and shut off the water and uh, it was right after my knee surgery and I was able to actually walk pretty fast. Uh, it's amazing how you can do things when <laughs> difficult things happen. And uh, yesterday, a wonderful Christian guy finally put in our floor. We had, we had four different con subcontractors before him, and then finally we got the floor guy, and he finally got it done. And we're so we're so thankful to God for that. And actually. With the insurance and everything, we actually had some improvements made on the floor and on the inside of the, you know, the dining room that got all wet, and, and we actually had good things come out of it, and so we're praising God for that. We don't want our plumbing to break upstairs again, but, of course, we fix that so it's not going to happen again, but it's, it's just wonderful. All the improvements in our house from... Four, five degrees below zero on your plumbing breaking. So it's, it's important to look at everything in, in a positive way. Uh, it, our human nature, it, well, just look at the news. I mean, almost every headline in the news is ain't it awful, ain't it awful, ain't it awful, and ain't it awful. And... Uh, you know, I really appreciate the news broadcasters at the end. They try to have a positive piece because they realize they're just dishing out a lot of really, really negative things. And so, you know, we all like to gossip, but you know what I encourage people to do? Positive gossip. Gossip about other people. Did you see how pretty her hair was the other day? Did you notice how neat he keeps the inside of his car? You know, just little things like that. I call that positive gossip. And so uh, when you're tempted to just be negative all the time, start gossiping in a positive way. And uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful to, 
to watch the world change as you start praising God and as you start praising other people. This, this next section, that first section was about our actions, and then the second section was about God's creation. Now this small third section is about our actions again. And, and God is, is telling us in, through this psalm, earth creatures, bow before God. World dwellers, down on your knees. You know, I was called to this church when I was down on my knees. And, and, and God spoke to me and told me something was going to happen and to be ready. And then a week later, I was with the church and they basically said, would you be our permanent part-time pastor? And I realized, oh, that's what that, when I was on my knees, uh, the, the actual thing that God said to me was, I'm going to bring a change in your life. Will you obey me? And, and I said, yes, sir. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't prayed on your knees in a while, unless you need knee surgery, <laughs> get on your knees. It'll be good for your spine, too, to loosen you up a little bit. <laughs> but pray on your knees if you can. I know physically some of you are not able, but if you're able, uh, this is a fairly common theme in the Hebrew Scriptures, being on our knees before God. It makes us humble. Uh, I had an interesting experience. I've, I've mentioned this to some of you, but my mom and dad were having some kind of difficulty. I, I think it was financially, or it, something was going on. I, I really can't remember what it was, but I, I knelt down on my knees one day and I said, God, please send Padre Pio to my mom and dad to bless them and help them through this difficulty. I was, I've been praying for them. My favorite saint is Padre Pio. And so about three, three weeks later, I, I uh, went over to their house, and my mom said, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, a couple of weeks ago, I woke up. She said, there was this monk standing by my bed. <laughs> and he was bent over. He's, he was looking down on my lampstand. And uh, I knew right away God had answer my prayer and I said were you peaceful or were you afraid because that's how you tell the spirits and she said oh I was peaceful and uh, I looked over your father to see if I should wake him up and when I looked back the monk was gone and I said mom that is so cool God sent you Padre Pio and immediately all the the problems in their life now I know Protestants don't believe in, in saints too much but boy, oh boy, you look up the life of Padre Pio, I think you want him to be your saint. Wonderful Christian man, uh, followed Jesus till the very day he died. All kinds of miracles. Several popes went to see him before he died. They realized he was a great spiritual leader. But uh, I was on my knees when I prayed. There's nothing magic about being on your knees except you acknowledge I'm powerless, I need help, I humble myself before you, God. And uh, I tell that story to a lot of my patients that are Roman Catholics, so they'll know I'm not anti-Catholic, you know. Uh, there's, there's an interesting sequel to that story. Mom had all this gold, and Mom was really good with finances. And so after Dad died, we went to two different gold merchants, and they were trying to give her nothing for a lot of money worth of gold, you know, $50 and $60, and she had a handful of gold. And so I said, Mom, we're just going to have to wait until we get somebody that's an ethical gold merchant. And so... Uh, I saw this ad in the Topeka paper at the motel at Forbes Field. There was a gold merchant. So we went there, and here was a young man. He had two preschool children running around, just like our kids here, and a young wife. And he wrote a check to my mom for almost $200. And so I said, you know, you're an ethical gold merchant. I teach ethics at Highland Community College, and you're an ethical person. 
And he said, I used to teach ethics in Belize. And I said, what were you doing in Belize? That's an English-speaking colony in Central America. And he said, I used to be a Roman Catholic priest. And so I told him the story about mom uh, and Padre Pio. And he got a real funny look in his eyes and he said, my father grew up in Italy and he was an atheist. Padre Pio personally led my father to a faith in Jesus Christ. That's not by chance, you know. Uh, not by chance that this priest would hear another story about somebody that had led his father to a faith in Jesus Christ. Not by chance that I ran into this former priest whose father had become a believer, and I'm sure that's how that young man had decided to become a priest and, and be a missionary priest in Belize. So uh, it's, it's wonderful when we get down on our knees, and, and I'd encourage you. Uh, the church I served before, uh, one day when it was empty, I, I, it's, it had a similar sanctuary to ours, I came down, just got on my knees, and, and laid on the ground and said, God, what is going on? The Holy Spirit spoke absolutely directly to me. I was on my knees. So this, think seriously about, as part of your praising God, uh, humbling yourself before God as well. Now this fourth section tells us that God is in control. God takes the wind out of Babel pretense. He shoots down the world's power schemes. God's plan for the world stands up, and all God's designs are made to last. When you look at the headlines today, Earl and I were just talking about this before church. There's a lot of power schemes going on in the world. Uh, among the nations and within the nations. And you know, it's very, very important for you and, and me to realize that God is in control. I'm praying for a great spiritual revival to happen in this country and in the world. I think many of the things going on today, some of them may be horrific, but God will use anything to bring the world to a faith in Jesus. Many of us here today have gone through incredible darkness, and that's why we're seeking the light of God. And, you know, I, I really do believe that our planet and the nations in this, in this earth, there's going to be some really terrible things happen in the future, but in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you that God is in control. God takes the wind, the power schemes. He has a plan, and things are going to be okay. You know, during World War II, it was bad enough that we were fighting Germany. And then in the middle of the war with the Germans, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And immediately they began recruiting people that had children. And my dad was one of them. And uh, the world was terrifically shaken up. But we're fighting an eastern power, and then we're fighting a, a power in the west. We had two wars going on at the same time. And you know, this whole country came to God during World War II. Because there was nothing else to come to. And really, I would say that to you. Come to God in this really difficult time than in the difficult times facing us. There's nothing else to come to except the Creator who loves you. He is going to take care of you and take you through this and increase your faith in God. And you know, every time I know several of you look death right in the face, I've looked death in the face several times too. It's wonderful to have a faith in God. It's unbelievable to have a faith in God and know that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. This last section, again, is a little different. The first section was on our actions. 
The second section of this psalm is God's creation. The third section was on our actions. This fourth section, God is in control. But this last section is God's blessing. Blessed is the country with God for God. Blessed are the people he's put in his will. I, I would encourage you this 4th of July weekend, pray for this country. Pray for this country. Because God's the only one that can straighten it out. <laughs> pray for this world. This world is in incredible confusion. Just being a military person, I won't even go into all the stuff that's happening in Africa right now. It's unbelievable. But all you know what's going on in Ukraine. But blessed is the country with God for God. Blessed are the people he's put in his will. Start praying for this world. Pray for a spiritual revival. And, you know, I would encourage you. No matter how dark it gets, keep praising God. Start using the word hallelujah in your own personal prayers. I ran across a really neat story about a little boy. This lady saw this little boy sitting on a rock on the edge of the forest, and he was going through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And so she stood there, and then he went through the alphabet again. And so she went to this little boy and she said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm praying. I know God will spell out all the right words. <laughs> and really, that's sort of what we do when we pray. We say, God, I like this, I like that. But you got all the right things that you want to bring in the world. You got all the right things you want to be in my life. There's something really profound about that little boy's prayer, isn't it? Every time you do your ABCs, I want you to think of that little boy. I know God will take all these letters and make the right prayer. And you and I are not too different from that little boy, are we? Little girls and little boys in our hearts, you know you're always going to be a little girl in your heart, a little boy in your heart. Trust God like a little child who trusts God. Trust God like a child who has good parents and who really trusts them. And everything's going to be okay. And you sound a lot better when you're trusting God. <laughs> you sound a lot better when you're praising God. Amen.